How expensive is LED virtual production? With its rise in popularity on TV shows and movie sets, it's the most frequent question we've been asked. So let's try to get to the bottom of it. I say try because there isn't exactly one answer to this question. Just as different movies and productions require different budgets and specializations, so too do virtual production setups. So here's your first caveat. Due to different markets and solutions, the final price tag given in this video will be a range. But because we'll be going through piece by piece what makes virtual production so expensive, at the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of what all of this costs. You don't have to take our word for it. We sat down with much smarter people than us who have worked on larger LED projects than we have. So if you're watching this because you casually want to build your own LED volume, here's my favorite piece of advice from our first interview, Phil Galler. I don't recommend anyone go out and just randomly build a large LED volume. Um, it is not a good business idea. There is no build it and they will come. You should have a built-in pipeline of work before you um, spend any amount of money on anything, but also <laughs> before you spend $10 million on something, think about what you want to build. Wait one sec. Why should we trust this guy? Allow me to introduce you to the one and only Philip Galler. He's one of the co-founders of Lux Machina, a production services company that specializes in virtual production. He's been involved in industry-defining LED projects like The Mandalorian, House of the Dragon, Barbie, and many, many other projects. When it comes to virtual production, Phil is the guy to talk to. All right, so full transparency, my initial idea about this video was to take every single line item of what makes an LED volume, do some math, and then give you the answer at the very end. But we're not gonna do that. Right here, right now, we're gonna give you the final price tag of an LED volume that's 80 feet in diameter and 30 feet high. Similar to builds on very recognizable TV shows, by the way. But anyway, Phil, Take it away. Sale of a large LED volume, 80 foot diameter, 20 to 30 feet high with all the rendering equipment, no labor, but just gear alone. You're definitely spending somewhere between eight to $16 million. Um, it's a significant financial investment. Okay, so we know 8 million to 16 million, that's an $8 million range. Where does that come from? That range includes different solutions that you want, different LED tile qualities, where you're building it. Whole lot of other factors, but just note, that is going to be our benchmark, 8 to 16 million. So what does 8 to 16 million dollars get you? Well, Phil told us that number does not include crew. So you're going to get your LED wall, your camera tracking solution, camera system to shoot with, computers to run the system, LED processor, time code gen lock system. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to lump that into our PC build. Not entirely accurate, but it works. So when we're talking about our LED volume, the biggest range is going to be the quality of your LEDs, how they're packaged within their cabinet, the assistance from the company that you purchased from, and pixel pitch. In terms of LED quality, there are some really high-end premium tiles like Row. It's easy and straightforward to set up. You can also remove tiles easily because of the build of the cabinet. And a big part of the price point is the assistance and setup that comes with it. My name is Mike Smith. I am the director of operations for Rovid. Visual US. If you ever have a problem, it doesn't matter if you're in like Switzerland or Colombia or wherever in Montana, like we can have boots on the ground helping you like within 48 hours if that's what you need. We know our stuff about LED. We know our stuff about LED processing. I mean, we can tell you about your lighting, your rigging, your media servers. Now we're getting into cameras and that's just something that you're not getting with other companies. Now there are a myriad of LED manufacturers. I'm not going to name anyone specific, but there are brands that are more budget friendly. Maybe their tiles aren't coated, or the packaging of the cabinet isn't as customizable and easy to work with. It's kind of like golf clubs. You can get custom fitted, you can get custom grips and perfect lie angle for your specific situation. And overall, that's probably going to help you be a better golfer. But there are also clubs straight off the rack that you can use and you're still playing golf. I hope you guys understand that analogy. Uh, I like golf. Okay, so now let's talk about pixel pitch. We've done a whole video on this and we've talked about it a whole lot. But basically, pixel pitch is how close the pixels are in an LED tile. The smaller the pixel pitch, the closer you can shoot to the LED volume, which makes those tiles more expensive. I think the reality is this is a problem that is un unresolvable. The higher the resolution, the higher resolution cameras start using. Um, and like eventually we're using 8K cameras and now we've got a 1.5 millimeter wall, but it's the same equation, right? Like you end up in Moray land somewhere and you end up in 
focal depth fall off land, uh, no matter what you do. More now we're, we're focused on color. What does the HDR performance look like? Um, how wide's the color gamut? Um, what color spaces can we work in with the processing chain? What what brightness and peak brightness do we get to work at? Um, those are really the things that make the most difference now, I think. We can use the principles that we just talked about for why some LEDs are more expensive than others and relate them to all of the other parts of our functioning LED volume. You're gonna need some camera tracking system. And just like the LED tiles, there are dramatically different price points that achieve different solutions for your virtual production stage. The same rule applies for camera solutions. You can pick up a Blackmagic Ursa that does time code, it's gen lock, and it's $5,000. You can also run an Ari Alexa LF and it's gonna run you a lot more than $5,000. It's the same thing for computers and it's the same thing for processors. Depending on your setup, there's an optimized solution for you. And those computers might cost you $40,000 each or they could cost you $10,000 each. Just know that your standard gaming computer isn't gonna be able to run a virtual production stage all by itself. So that's your eight to $16 million. And the vast majority of that cost will fall into your LED. But we're not done. We're not done. Because this, is caveat number two. Although that is the price of an LED volume, that is not the true price of virtual production. I mean, we have the LED volume. What else could we be missing? Oh, right. People. The volume doesn't run itself and it requires skilled workers. Filmmaking has often been, okay, I need two audio people, three grips, two electricians. Now it's, I don't know what I need, but we want to do this thing. Oh, well, what is this other line item for millions of dollars worth of people and why are there 15 of them? You know, it's a very different discussion. So the second biggest cost other than the LED itself is people. There will always be crew on your virtual production set, whether you're working in a permanent setup or you're doing an LED pop-up stage. A couple of key leaders, usually a supervisor and a producer pair of some kind. Supervisor is responsible largely for the creative and then the, I like to think of the, the management of the team um, that's executing each individual look. Um, that team on a big show could be anywhere from 14 people, call it 10, 10 to 20 people. Um, you know, I've worked on shows where we've had 25 people and I've worked on shows where we've had three or four people. But on average, a big virtual production team is going to be a couple of systems people, some LED people, a couple of people working on computers, um, uh, engineers, a couple of software developers, um, and usually in the range of about 14-ish people is, is a good, a good, really healthy team size on a, on a large project. And yeah, plays into the cost. Um, it is the uh, second biggest cost, right, outside of the LED is often the people. Very few people think about this as well, but when you get onto one of these really large projects, it's an opportunity for people to move up in their careers. So how do you, over the course of an eight month long project or a year long project, how do you manage people who are trying to move up in the world as well, or trying to get to a new position? How do you make sure you maintain education and mentorship while you're making sure the job is also getting done? Um, and that actually has a, a kind of a bearing on costs as well. Um, it, it all ties into each other and, and you know, a bunch of levers you pull one lever and another one goes up and you got to go pull that lever down another one goes up and it's a balancing act for sure so finally we reach our last topic which isn't about purchasing it's about renting which takes up a vast majority of the market most productions don't need a purpose-built led volume for their production most will rent but how much does that cost? Phil's got the answer to this one too. 2D plate playback. Um, my estimate is 65% of the work in the industry is about this, uh, is people in cars, driving in cars, and they've got LED on the outside. That is absolutely the bulk of the work. It is where almost all the money is. That costs, if you're a production, somewhere on the range of 50 to 75K a week, depending on um, how big your setup is. Is it multiple cars? How many people do you need? How many days of setup? But it's about 50 to 75. That's a, a, a price reduction. Um, I think originally it was 75 to 100, probably two or three years ago. Um, and now there's a lot of people in the market. So you might even get lower, you know, you might get prices closer to 35 to 50 if you're going into a standing stage. But for a pop-up that's going to deploy somewhere in the world, 50 to 75K is a safe number to budget uh, with the staff um, that you would need. And that's pretty average for us. That includes computers, it includes the LED. LED, of course, being the biggest bulk of that cost. That is uh, 2D work. Then I'm gonna do like pop-up LED volumes. Um, pop-up LED volume could be anywhere from 100 to, I've seen them be three, four, 
hundred thousand dollars a week. Eighty foot diameter walls that are um, almost three hundred and sixty degrees enclosed and twenty to thirty feet tall can be anywhere from that's going to be two fifty to four hundred ish a week. Not as many large volume pop ups, so like a medium and a medium would be you know a hundred or two fifty um, a week is is certainly not out of the question for a medium sized pop up with some small motion capture or camera tracking estimates. Thank you to Philip Galler and Mike Smith for hopping on and speaking to us about the price of LED very transparently about virtual production. I feel like that is a rarity. That's why we made this video. There's so much more from this conversation we had with Phil about former productions he'd worked on, the beginning of Lux Machina as a company, he talked to us a lot about Oblivion and the solutions they found for that production. So much knowledge there, it's 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 insane. So we're gonna cut it down. We're gonna cut down a lot of those pieces and we're gonna be posting them, so subscribe for that. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.